Hi, everybody. My name is Kat Margulis, and I'm the host of The Power of Story. And as a longtime journalist, author, and book coach, I tend to see story everywhere I go. But in recent years, I've had the opportunity to see how story can transform lives and businesses. And this is really what I want to explore with you and my guests through this series is how you can create the life, the business, and the legacy of your dreams through story. So today, I'm really, really happy to have Andrew Gray here with us. And Andrew is an actor, humanitarian, producer, writer, model, public speaker, creative director, and athlete. He has worked with numerous charities and has founded a public speaking empowerment program targeting youth and parents called Beyond the Cameras, as well as being the co-creator of the Superhero You, which is a community to help people discover their superhero power and live a life full of confidence and creativity. Andrew, so nice to have you here. Kat, yes. that was an incredible <laughs> intro. I did give you a full bio and I think you painted a beautiful picture. Yes, the superhero you is what I'm currently focusing on. Awesome. I had a very traumatic upbringing and I always wanted to become something. And, I, and when I realized today is I actually want to unbecome more things that I became, more than I became. So I can get back to my 24 karat self, my more self-aware sense. I'd say the number one and two questions I get every single day is how do I get people to like me and how do I get people to understand me? And the thing is you can't, but what you can do is understand yourself and be a positive relational energizer so that you create this heliotropic effect that every door that you walk into, you're the, an asset because you're the sun. And just like plants follow the sun, they will also be following you. You're going to be taken on this beautiful journey. With that being said, I do believe whoever can tell the best story will rule the world. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I have been talking to scientists and, 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 and people who are transforming business. And that is pretty much the message I'm hearing loud and clear today. The person with the best story wins. It's awesome. So I'm just like shocked because you are so radiant. You are so happy and light and positive. Um, I guess, how did you redesign your own story? To control my narrative? Yeah. Well, I grew, I grew up in a broken home. I grew up in a home that was full of uh, physical abuse, verbal abuse, alcoholism, gang culture. And I just decided at a young age, seeing all of that, that I wanted to go the complete opposite way in every way, shape or form. I am uh, a faithful man. I'm a man of the cloth. And I just realized when God is for you, nothing could be against you. So I just started one thing after the next. You know, when I saw my parents... Um, go at each other's throats. I wanted to have them kind of escape that through entertaining them. I didn't know it was actually a business. So I would go to school and do show and tell like Jim Carrey, Fire Marshal Bill. I don't know if you remember uh, In Living Color, which was wonderful. But unfortunately, I spent some time going to the principal's office uh, because you're entertaining the class too much. Well, that led on to me then going to New York after high school, entering competitions there, which actually got me a seat in front of a whole bunch of agents and managers from around the world. I ended up booking, uh, not booking, but um, locking down an agent for theatrical and print, went to Los Angeles and just started my journey there. But I was only there for a couple of years before my manager was like, you know, you're very green in life. I can see you're very enthusiastic and ready to just get lost and find yourself. So I recommend you do that. And I went over to Asia and did a lot of TVCs, commercials, print, and got my craft more developed and then came back to the United States. And that's when I had more opportunities, uh, more resources. And again, knowing who I was, I didn't need to get the people to understand me. I was like, I'm a hero in my life. That's wow. what I am. I know that. I'm not the villain in my life. I'm the hero in my life. I'm not the sidekick either, but I am also the producer of my life. So I'm going to invest in my life. And I got the opportunity to play a, a wonderful role uh, which was called Tro Troy Burroughs, was the character on the 20th year anniversary of Power Rangers. And that gave me my global, uh, I would say, stage to then present who I am and what I'm doing. Um, yeah. And just, just kept going on and on and on from there. Incredible. You have an incredible story. You have an incredible story. Um, and I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of hearing uh, when some of these things started to develop, but like, when did you realize, maybe you haven't yet, but did, when did you realize, well, yes, you are, you're a storyteller. When did you realize you are a storyteller? 
when did I realize I was a storyteller? I realized I was a storyteller at actually a very young age because there was a lot of other stories and narratives around me that could have easily affected me in a negative way and could have programmed me negatively. I don't know how I had that self-awareness, but I would just start writing my life story as a, as a young age, like a script. Wow. And I just kept innovating and innovating and innovating it. And, um, you know, it's been a wonderful journey. I'll tell you yes. that there's a lot of tests and testimonies in that. Yeah. I, I knew that uh, from a very young age and I wouldn't say it was a storyteller, right? That's more of the yeah. business side of it. Yeah. But I just knew that I didn't want to live life. Oh, how was this? I knew I wanted to be an adventurer. Oh, I love that. I, I watched love the show it. alone. It's on Discovery, I think. And yeah. um, this guy said, I can be that guy that jumps on the snowmobile and pushes the button. And then I, you know, I'm going to get my hunt and I'm going to bring it back home to the lodge. That's some people. He's like, but for me, I like to get on my two skis, have my dog pull me, have an 80 pound rucksack and have a bow and an arrow. I'm an adventurer. And I was like, yes, that's exactly it. That's who I am too. I'm an adventurer. Mm. So I think all adventurers are about discovering, cultivating mm -hmm. and strengthening and then repeating and repeating. Incredible. Incredible. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so we got to have a conversation before today and I really loved, there were a lot of things that you shared that were really profound. And I really loved what you said about how stories can help us connect the dots. Yes. Um, not only in our life and with each other, but even across generations. And I'd love to rewind the tape. I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> you can oh, remember that piece. <laughs> But yeah, I just found that really, even just that, like, yeah, that generational, maybe, you know, um, eternal human, human story, the human story connecting of the dots, like how, what part do you think that you play in that or, or that story does? Well, first of all, I moved to a lot of different schools, I believe my memory of six schools in elementary school because parents are in different places, different jobs, et cetera. So I needed to be again, the hero of my life to create relationships, mm. right? Can create community and that being fear is an illusion. I just want to let everybody know that, right? Mm -hmm. Fear is that illusion. <clears throat> but when you go in with a pure intent and you cut open your heart and just boom, 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 give it right there. This is me. I'm insufficient. I'm human too. This is my story. You instantly connect with people instantly because we've all gone through something or we're going through something and it's at any and every age, um, any race, creed, et cetera. So when you, when you do that, you're creating a community. Now I just kept doing that for the rest of my life, which has helped me in business. Yeah. Um, it's helped me connect very well to business. It's helped um, live a healthy lifestyle know what is serving me, what is not serving me. And again, discover, cultivate and strengthen. Now I like to focus on my soil. Um, I, I believe as all human beings, we are a seed put into dirt. And it's only through a higher power that will rain down on us this love that will then cultivate that dirt mm -hmm. into soil. Um, but that soil needs to be mended all the time to get new oxygen in there, potassium, magnesium, chromium, et cetera, et cetera, so that our seed then bursts and we have roots. And once we have roots, then we shall bear fruits. You know, that form over function. Mm. And again, just, just repeating that over. So now it's not just one tree, but you have a whole harvest of an orchard. And that's what I've just been keeping the momentum going. Yeah. I what I find <laughs> incredible with you and in my conversations with you so far, it's just like, you are just so heart open, like so fully authentic. Um, but that's really hard for so many people, like, and with the, especially with the, with youth, right. Where we're, we're in the process of building up all the walls, you know, how do you encourage people to take down those walls? Um, so they can have that connection and they can, be their story, share their story and, and connect to other people on a, on a deeper, more authentic level. By reminding them of what their origin story is. We need to rewind, like you said, we need to rewind. So to better answer that question or to layer it, I ask people, why is it more easy to connect 
and share your story. Here's my heart to an Uber or Lyft driver. And it is somebody of 20, 15, two months relation at work, whatever. And um, the main word that is used is fear, Mm. being judged, not being enough. But once we realize that we are more than enough, that we are not a victim to our story, but a survivor of it, a thriver of it, then we soar to new heights. And on that, and on that as well, you know, I, I, I hope that everybody can relate to that so they can be the eagles in their own life. And when we're making, we cut our heart open, we become uh, something greater than. And I just want to say that if you're in fear, you're going to be hanging out with the crows. People who oh. love thoughts up, bock, peck, speck, poop, just, just, and they're, and they're right on the surface, right? They're just right above the surface. But if you're that eagle, you're fearless and you're going to soar above that. You're going to soar through that storm, right? And you're going to be up here. But just remind yourself when you're up here, self-awareness, mm. eagles fly solo. Mm. So it may feel a little cold up there. It may feel a little desolate, but you're going to have the best vision. Mm. You're going to be able to, and eagles can look miles ahead, right? You're going to be able to ride the currents, ride the green lights, like Matthew McConaughey says, Mm -hmm. right? And you're going to stay away from all the things that are not serving you. Now, this is really cool. And this is like a tangent on it, but eagles take care of other eagles. Mm. Isn't that amazing? So this is a true thing in nature. Let's say, um, my partner eagle passed away for some reason Mm -hmm. another eagle will come by and see that and they will drop food into that nest they will actually sit in the nest and allow the mother or the male to go off and they'll come back they're together as one yeah so just who do you want to be do you want to be a crow or do you want to be an eagle or you could be an owl which are eagles of the night and they do very similar things and they're life partners Mm -hmm. you know once you once you shed your, uh, your skin per se, or cut mm-hmm. open your heart and just give yourself to another and you share your story, you will open up a relationship that could be holding you back de- years or even decades. And, and to just extend that, when I came to uh, John's house, I had a panic attack the second night I got here. We all have them. I have them. I'm not perfect. Mm. These are just a natural, normal thing. So just be okay with that too. These are natural, normal things to have a panic attack. That's that storm to break you down, let the light in, reshape you, reform you and get you on your way. If Mm -hmm. you are a a winner, if you are a hero in your own life. And I told John, what are we creating? What are we doing? Who's going to buy it? Oh my gosh. Like, uh, like I just flew all the way over here. I'm supposed to be over here. I'm supposed to be doing this. Uh, And he was like, you're freaking me out, man. And I'm like, hey, I, I'm, I need to do this. I, Cause I, I was like, I'm freaking out because I forgot out of the excitement of life. Life can be very exciting to do this. Mm-hmm. So I shared mm-hmm. him my history. And I said, if we're to make history, I need to, I must share my history with you. Mm-hmm. We then shared tears. We shared oh. hugs. He shared his history. And uh, we've been in colleagues now for about six months, but we are now, mm. we're brethren. Yeah, I love it. And um, for those watching at home, um, Andrew speaking about John Livesey, who uh, was my first interview for the series actually. Yes. And so tell me about what you guys are creating together because it's really beautiful. Thank you. So we're creating the superhero you, which again, it teaches you how to be the superhero in your life and not the villain and how to unpack your stories, which are your true superpowers that you can either present them, not project them, but present them in a concise and compelling manner. If that's an elevator pitch, or if that's on a first date, or if that's in a job interview, that's what wow. we're doing. And we're that's incredible. The- and is it all ages? Is it is there a certain, uh, is it youth or demographic It is all wise? ages, but we are targeting 20s, 18 nice. to uh, mid 20s, because that's a time where they are you know, exiting out of high school, going into college, which they're probably going to move away from where they live now, aka their nest, yeah. right? Um, or they just graduated college and they're going to go into a new job or not, or not know what to do and may think they need this big portfolio per se, but really all they need to do is share their story. And if that resonates with um, wherever they're going to work, they're going to get the job and they're yeah. going to, they're going to know them right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And most likely they're going to like them. And overall, they're going to trust them. And when you have that sandwich, you become the superhero 
in your own life, the superhero you. So that's what we're creating. And we're doing Very core powerful. content. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I'll let you continue. Oh, yeah. So we're doing uh, courses online. We're also going to be doing like a create your own adventure, which is based on similar aspects to the Myers-Briggs personalities. Um, there's 16 different personalities, uh, spirit animals from my indigenous background. So we're going to be creating intellectual properties and just bringing okay. people along our journey, which is going to help them unpack their stories. I love it. I love it. Um, it it's really wonderful because I, uh, with some of the people, I think it was Mario I was chatting with and just talking about transforming corporate spaces, transforming business and how it's like an inside out job. And how cool is it that it could be these 20 somethings entering the space, creating the change as they enter it by, by leading the way, you yeah. know, leading the way by example, showing up this way. And then the ripple effect that they could be having, you know, on whoever's interviewing them and then be like, yeah, you know, this can expand. Um, 100%, in, in that it's cool. John and I met kind of around that note, uh, yeah. going through the beginning of the pandemic. And I wanted to remind myself of who I am, what I went through. I started reading his book, uh, Better Selling Through Storytelling and the sale is in the tale. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's like, when you go to pitch something, you want to start with the most engaging, raw part of what you're going to be presenting really capture these people so that again you're not any kind of victim or you're not just putting out logic and numbers that's that's ugh, it will put you to sleep right we want to keep you energized yeah um so i reached out to him he's like we're all human beings be human so just carrying the momentum i reached out to him and then boom he uh kind of fangirled a little bit and, <laughs> and now here we are i'm sitting in his living room that is so cool. Um, I mean, you do a lot of, you do. And so in, is this, um, does this go with beyond the cameras? Do you want to tell me about beyond the cameras? Is that yeah, so beyond the cameras was a public speaking endeavor that I took on after I did power Rangers, which was from 2012, 2015, because I received so many questions, um, about being a leader or how do I get in the industry? Um, what can my children expect? So it was really designed from eight to 18 years old mm. to, to teach them that this is a business and that you need about 10,000 hours mastered. Mm -hmm. And that's about five years, but if you can do 20,000 hours, that's really going to get you ahead of the game. So mm. from age eight, you can start your professional career. And by the age of 18, where your adulthood and you, you know, you're guided by your parents, you could already have one or two books out. You could already know um, what kind of characters you want to play, what you're willing to explore in, et cetera, you know, with the guidance of your parents. So it, it invited children and their parents into the scenes and I'll give them rules of success. i would tell them my story, of course, and then I'd bring people up and we would do different scene study workshops. And cool. it was a lot of fun. We did that in 88 cities in two countries. Wow, that's amazing. That's incredible. Um, Thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, so you, you've, you've obviously encountered a lot of, uh, of youth in the work that you've done. Um, what are the stories you're finding that the youth need to hear today or want to hear today? What are they craving in stories? What are they craving in stories? From my experience, they, um, they want to escape mm. obligations. They want to find a way to almost not live in this reality, which is life. They really want attention. They want to be liked. They want to learn how to be liked. They want to learn how they can fly per se mm -hmm. and not really be grounded and live in a fantasy, um, which I feel like is extremely toxic. Now there's nothing wrong with storytelling and fantasy, but at the end of the day, we are living a human existence in the spiritual realm and we need to connect and be human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Cause we're, you know, it's, it's hard with all this consumption that we're going that, that, I mean, there's a lot of great things. I want to start yeah. off with the positive, but there we're, there's just a lot more consumption than any other, I guess, um, 
uh, what's I, I'm blanking right now, but um, just like my grandmother didn't have as much consumption. Yes. Other didn't, right? My right. my older brother even didn't. I I didn't. I didn't, you know I didn't get my first cell phone until I was like 18. But now yeah. children are welcome to bring like their tablet, their their Apple iWatch. They got their phone. They have all these different apps that they're using, you know, for integrations and education. And there's just mm -hmm. a lot more they're taking in. So I feel yeah. like that's just a lot to take in. That could give anybody anxiety. So yes. they want to speak. Think about that. Yeah. These are just the notes from listen. So just right now. Just yeah. But if they had, they wake up in the morning, they get eh, eh. yeah. Give me some Adderall. I need to focus. No, you don't. You yes. Peel back yeah. the layers a little bit, you know, and get right back to um yeah. more of it. Anyway, I hope that made sense. And, and no, absolutely. And um I was just speaking with Angus Fletcher. He's um, I guess, in the series, and we talked about kids a lot and and creativity. And um it's interesting that while we have an abundance of seemingly stories, stories, um, there's actually uh, uh, I want to say a dearth, but I'm not really sure how to use that word. I've never used that word before. So I'm not going to use it, but like, um, there's actually not that much diversity in the stories. And there's actually a lot more control and a narrowing of the tunnel of the stories that children and in, in, in youth are exposed to um, because wow. of, you know, kind of a, a restricting in the libraries and the schools of the kind of content that they think is safer to them to share. And you've got social media algorithms. So there seems to be a lot of stories, but they're actually, there isn't, they're not getting, they're not, it's not reaching them. It's reaching uh, their target audience. Mm, yeah. You know, I think it's, it's, it's reaching uh, what their agenda is. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, when you, when you turn on the news, just for instance, you're not watching the news, you're watching their news. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The social media app majority, I want to say all, but majority are putting out their news, their best life, not their highest, truest self, but yeah. their best life. Um, so that's just a lot to compete with. You know, I always thought it'd be so cool. And I hope somebody does this. Take it, take it. <laughs> um, I always thought it'd be cool if somebody started a news station that's called Happiness Rules. Yeah. Happiness Rules. It's just all happiness, all the time, all good stories. Yes. Triumph testimony test and testimony that would be incredible i love that yeah i love that um yeah that's obviously why, that's how i recharge you know i don't i don't get recharged watching the avengers yeah uh, i get recharged by reading um the good book i get it by reading meditations from marcus aurelius and you just he's for instance he puts in there um I want to remind you all, you're not in your final form yet. Mm. Your final form is ashes in a name. So live an adventurous life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love it. Well, and, and that kind of brings me to the hero story. And you talked about hero story and how you had, you were, you were co-creating, like working that internal narrative from a really young age. And now you're empowering um, other people through Superhero You um, uh, to gain awareness around their own hero's journey. Um, yeah, tell me a little bit more about how you, how you do that to create confidence and creativity in people's lives. There, well, confidence breeds success and success breeds confidence. And I do believe if you fail to prepare, then you're preparing for failure. So we're just, again, giving them all the tools they need kind of on their Batman belt to go out there and live their life unapologetically through mm. purpose, their own purpose, which is pleasure, right? We were just talking about escape and going into pleasure. Well, yeah. what if your purpose was your pleasure? Yes. And you can put those together. Mm -hmm. so we are taking them on a, on a journey through course modules having them answer questions um, about their own life and then going, boom, you just earned this badge. Boom, you just earned this animal to go with you. Now I'm an actor and you sometimes we enter scenes and it could be like, let's say um, I'm here to protect somebody, right? And I go in, I'm like, 
hey, you guys need to stop. And my acting coach was like, what are you doing? <laughs> that you, that you didn't, weren't a very assertive in there. How about you go in like a gorilla? And then you go in, you're like, <laughs> you guys need to stop. You don't have, you know what I mean? So it's really just giving them their power back. They already have the power. So that's what we're doing is bringing them through this course and giving them the option to choose very similar to like a, a Minecraft or a Fortnite or a first person game, right? where they can start playing this game because they're already loving the games and realize and understand that they have these powers that they never knew. So let's just ignite them. Love it. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, that's so exciting. Um, they, I don't want to say they need it, but I'm just really excited for them that this is going to be this option um, and it's going to empower them so much. And we're working with some wonderful people behind it, not only John Livesey, but um, his partner who helped create his courses and helped his book. Her name is Kristen. And she has a PhD in literature and course building. I'm also working with my buddy named Wink Winkler, who's worked at Activision, uh, Warner Brothers, Nickelodeon. And they're mm -hmm. so behind this thing uh, and feel like it's an absolute necessity. Yeah. Yeah. That's Incredible. Very Incredible. The people, the people after um, this. Gosh. Uh, do you have anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up for today? I've loved this chat. Yes. How can I continue to support you and what you're doing? Me? Yes, you. <laughs> oh, just being here. I love these conversations. This is such a joy. Um, yeah, I just really, I love having you here. You got great energy. I love uh, that you are an amazing role model and a refreshing voice in the space for the for the kids listening and for adults too. I get refreshed yeah, listening too. <laughs> this course is, again, is, is targeted towards the 20 somethings but it's for everybody. And that's the way mm. we priced it. John yeah. was, is very targeted towards corporate. And when I read his book, I was like, we have so many parallels. I'm going to keep this man's legacy alive. I'm going to reach out to him. I'm going to pitch him an idea, rada, yada, rada. But his courses are um, corporate priced. Let's yes. just say that. Yeah. Um, we want this to be for everybody. It's going to be around 35 bucks is what we're targeting right now, but it is for every age. Um, so yeah. get excited about that. And um it's yeah. awesome. You know, I mean, from everything I'm hearing today, it really is just so on point because um, in the end, this is what's going to save us. It's going to be our stories and, and sharing them with each other. So thank you so much for, for being uh, an advocate and champion in this arena. Really appreciate you. Thank you, Kat. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for watching at home. Uh, Power of Story Workshop is coming up on October 24th. There's more amazing interviews on the way. Thank you, Andrew, so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been a privilege. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everybody.